Our prayers have been answered. Justin Herbert is back out at practice with the Chargers, even getting some key time finding some chemistry with his young receiving core. And of course, the reports are he looks awesome already. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for nine seasons, but this is our seventh year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you to the everydayers out there for making us your first listen on this glorious day when Justin Herbert, the golden god, is now back at Chargers practice. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free at the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Daniel, according to Jim Harbaugh, the heavens opened up and the <laughs> angels erupted in beautiful song as Justin Herbert walked back onto the practice field for the first time I heard since it. July. So big, big news. Very, very excited to talk about Justin Herbert being back and being absolutely sharp as attack which was absolutely fantastic to read and simi fehoko is doing absolutely everything in his power to make this 53 man roster is it going to be enough and jt woods for all his faults as a safety is trying his hand at corner and is that going to make it where he earns his spot on this 53 yeah, it's all great questions, and I think all things that after two preseason games, the picture is starting to come together on, and that's exciting with a, a lot of stakes going in to this last game against the Cowboys on Saturday. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. David. It is our Chargers by yourself show getting into the biggest storylines and overreactions, but the biggest storyline hands down today is that Justin Herbert is back at practice and not only back at practice, but also practicing, right? Because I think the big thing here is we weren't sure what that graduated ramp up period would be. I could have easily seen him, you know, being out of the walking boot, but still being with Ben Herbert inside doing things and working things out, right? No, he was back out on Monday. He was in seven on seven, so not full contact. But he was out there and actually practicing, actually getting more reps with this young receiving core, actually finding, you know, a way to shake the rust off after missing a couple of weeks. He looked really good, and we'll get into that part. But, David, just having him out here as far as the grand scale of things with the quarterback struggles we've seen behind him, I mean, it's hard to understate how big this is for the team. It really is. And, and honestly, I think it's good for the entire offense to have Justin Herbert out there because everyone now, no disrespect to the other quarterbacks, but it is what it is. Now they can get the real work in. Now they yeah. can really start establishing what this offense is going to look like when they strap it up for real and go, go against the Raiders. It's for the wide receivers. It's for the tight ends. It's for the offensive linemen to get their chemistry and their communication down. It's for the wide receivers and Justin Herbert to get on the same page. So when it is real live bullets, they can go out there and not be afraid to go out there and let it rip and be on the same page. So Justin Herbert being back at practice with, you know, three weeks before the regular season starts is probably the best news that we could have possibly received on this beautiful day. Yeah, and I don't think anyone was happier about it than Jim Harbaugh, who said he <laughs> looked great, no drop-off, pinpoint accuracy, which I think is what you love to hear. And I think what, you know, Ken E had for this buy or sell today, which was, Buy or sell, Justin Herbert will be able to pick up where he left off after being in the walking boot for two weeks. And David, I don't think we would have doubted that even if we didn't know the results of Monday's practice. But it's easy to see that, yes, he's back in there and things look much different very quickly. And he's firing on all cylinders. Yes, he absolutely is. According to Daniel Popper of The Athletic, Herbert looks sharp, completing 11 of 12 passes in his first period of seven on seven work. And that's exactly what you want to hear. I mean, you know, Justin Herbert was chomping at the bit to get back on the football field. Let me at him. Let me show him what I'm capable of doing. And he showed showed up and showed out that he was in rare form. And that's what everybody wants to hear. That's what everybody that's wants to hear, what everyone wants to see. Um, it was just beautiful news from Justin Herbert. And let's be honest. It's what everyone wanted to hear. 
honestly, we needed it. It was a yes, dose of medicine, please. truly, to see Justin Herbert back out there. It was all of the fears and the pit in your stomach over what we've seen over these first two preseason games falling away a little bit, yeah. right? A weight lifted off your shoulders a little bit because I think that there was so much concern about what this offense looked like and the inability to actually see what the actual full potential of it is because yeah. you were seeing it with lesser quarterbacks trying to operate it. And not only that, trying to operate it the way that they plan on running it when you have a superstar quarterback like Justin Herbert. So great to see that firing on all cylinders. And I just think for this team, it's so huge for this season because truly, if you made me pick, Right now, if Easton Stick was going to take this team to Carolina, the worst team in the NFL last year, and they were going to surely win that game, I might sell it, man. Like, yeah, and that's, I don't know and if that's, I'm there. Yeah. And that's, the, you know, that's the easiest game on their schedule as it looks right now. So, yeah. like, to have this dude back and not even be just working out at this point, to have him out there throwing to his receivers with just about, you know, a day less than three weeks away before the season opener, I think is absolutely gigantic for this team. I'm, I'm selling that we're going to see him in the preseason. We might not ever oh, yeah. see him in the preseason for his entire career. He hasn't not played. Happening. I think he might have. I think he would have. I'll say that. I think yeah, he would have. So if, he, if he had stayed healthy, I think we would have seen him. But I don't think we will. So to hear, you know, looked great. I thought I heard music, the voice of angels, maybe. <laughs> like, that. <laughs> that's really, really awesome. And this is a team that in the first year of Jim Harbaugh wouldn't have been able to to potentially overcome, you know, losing some of those games. I think the first three games are super winnable for this team, yeah. especially with what Russell Wilson and Justin Fields have looked like. Like Not Steelers, good. Panthers, Raiders in reverse order. Those are three winnable games. So if you potentially didn't have Justin Herbert for those, that would be huge. Right now, he is on track to be back for the start of the season. If there's no setbacks, we should be good. And none of us will have to, you know, think about the nightmares too long. That being said... There's still an issue behind him. And this is from Chris Saiz, who says, buy or sell the Chargers backup quarterback is not on the roster at the moment. So we were going to talk about this anyways. But the main thing here, David, is what I'm buying out of this is I'm buying that this doesn't change the need for the Chargers to have a new backup quarterback. No, it, it absolutely does not change that whatsoever to me. Uh, I think you already can see with your own eyes what the quarterback play has looked like with the starting offense with Easton Stick, and it's not good enough. That is clear and obvious to anybody that has put on the first two preseason games. The Chargers absolutely have to be evaluating every single backup quarterback that's available on every other NFL team yeah. and be preparing to either wait till that individual gets cut or to make a deal and make a trade to secure the guy that they feel is going to be a proper adequate backup quarterback a backup quarterback is someone that you can trust to come in and at least manage the game and be able to hopefully keep you in contention to win yeah. i don't think that you can feel that way with easton stick or luis perez at this moment in time so that necessitates that the chargers do their due diligence and go get somebody they feel can help this team stay competitive in the event that Justin Herbert is unavailable to go. And it's not crazy to think that that might happen, right? This is three years in a row where he's had some sort of injury. He's only missed time because of one of them because he's tough as hell and it's going to take a lot to keep him out. Yeah. But you have to know, like, you could argue that Easton Stick could keep you competitive at the end of last year with what he was able to do in three out of those yeah. four games. You can't argue that right now, right? Worst EPA, effective points added by any quarterback in this preseason, right? And then I think this kind of works out perfectly because the big thing here is how quickly will the new quarterback be able to get up to speed on the offense with Justin Herbert coming back. Now you have time. Now yeah. you can potentially wait for those cuts where a Tyler Huntley, who's actually started games for Greg Roman and guys like that could become available to you when that day comes. And unless Justin Herbert gets hurt week one, that man will have time to be able to learn right at a more gradual pace and have weeks and weeks to potentially get in the groove of this offense if you get something like Huntley obviously he's already played in Greg Roman's offense before should be a pretty easy fix there but this is not a solved issue yet this is less urgent but still necessary so yes I think there's a lot of you know hope now that hey maybe something can happen now you have more time to do it and I think it's just going to be a much better landscape in the quarterback market after those final cut down days but we have more to get into because all of a sudden Simi Fehoko is trying to make himself inevitable to make this roster will he make it will he make it at the expense of brendan rice we're getting into all that and more on today's locked on chargers podcast 
First of all, I need to tell you guys about FanDuel because I know you guys have heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you because now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers get, can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. As someone that watches religious football on Sundays, and that is my entire day on a Sunday, there's nothing better than this, but FanDuel, the number one sportsbook you're going to use. And today, we're going with the Padres, because guess what we did yesterday? We went with the Padres, they won by two, they covered the one and a half, and we're doubling down today. I think this one will be closer, but they're playing the Twins again tonight at home, and I have the uh, Padres to win on the money line at minus 102 getting just about even money on a team as hot as the Padres right now just to win the game by any amount. Too good to pass up. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. David, let's continue getting into our Chargers buy or sell. We love you guys. We know that you love the buy or sell show and we love giving it to you because you guys have been so great and Thank gracious you. with giving us your buy or sells to overreact to, right? <laughs> And thank you to everyone who hit us up at Locked On LAC and even the ones we couldn't get to today because there was truly such an outpouring. There was just we would need a four hour show to get to all the ones and even just the <laughs> and good you might not mind, ones. but the 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 company we work for does. Right. <laughs> but we do have a good one here from Dylan Kirkpatrick, who says buy or sell. Simi Fehoko makes the team and Brendan Rice gets cut. I know I teased this yesterday on the show. Hey, this is definitely a buy or sell we want to get into today. Edgar S. also very similar. We had a couple of them that were very similar to this. And it is, I think, one of the biggest questions looming on this roster because, David, it does feel like at this point it could be a two-man race between Rice and Simi Fihoko. Yeah, and, and I think when you pondered this, you know, buy or sell, you have to look at the body of work, the entire body of work of both of these gentlemen, starting right. with Simi Fihoko. And it's five catches on seven targets for 85 yards. That's good for 17 yards per reception. So not only is he making catches, he's making big catches and explosive plays. Also, he's showing excellent blocking skills in the running game. And you know how important that is in this offense. He has blocks that pop on tape that you see and you can identify. And yep. also, he's a core four guy on special teams. He's playing kick return uh, on kick return, kick coverage, punt return, and punt coverage. So... And he has a special teams tackle as well throughout a the big preseason. One. A big yeah, one. That was a big hit. Yeah. Like a fine. stick, like a major stick. So yeah. Simi Fihoko is doing every single thing in his power to be able to make this roster. And when you look at Brennan Rice, it's a bunch of targets and no catches. And some of that's, you know, on the quarterback play and some yeah. of that's on him, right? I mean, that's he did you, have a drop. You have to yeah. bear that responsibility, right? And so when you look at it just like that, you know, in layman's terms, I'm going to buy it. Ooh. I know that's a hot take, and I'm sorry. I love Brennan Rice. I really appreciate his skill set. But when you look at how can one player impact the team and be, as Jim Harbaugh says, the best players are going to be the ones that play the best, and the best players are going to be the ones that make the 53. When yeah. we're talking about these two players in particular, Simi Fehoko is the better player at the moment. Yeah, and, and I mean, to be fair, right, what did you say? You have to look at the whole picture. So just sure. to put it on the preseason isn't fair. The problem is Simi's been really good in training camp too, right? Like he's he had has. really good practices. We always talk about that four-touchdown stretch he had over a two-practice span. I think it was last week or the week before that. Like, So he's been showing up there too. Has a, a very little chemistry with Justin Herbert from tagging on at the end of last year. But when hearing Jim Harbaugh talk about him, right, he said, competitors welcome starting to separate himself i think the biggest wild card here is darius davis and i think it has been and i think it continues to be because i think this is under the assumption the chargers are going to keep six wide receivers and that would be josh palmer lad mcconkey quentin johnson dj shark darius davis and then one of either brendan rice or Simi fehoko yeah it was weird seeing darius davis not returning kickoffs just a it little was. bit it, it was yeah. a little bit weird to see that he's an all pro punt returner maybe it's just Ryan Ficken knows what he has in him. Let's see what we have with these other guys. It was a little bit weird to me. Well, let's not get him hurt. You know, it's the preseason. Sure. But if you're just, I mean, Darius Davis as a wide receiver, I don't think makes this team. 
I don't. I, I don't, you know, if you if he didn't bring any special teams value to the table, I don't think he makes this team as a legitimate receiver. I think Brendan Rice is a better receiving option than him. I think Simi Fihoko right now is a better receiving option than him. That's what makes it sticky. I'm going to sell it for now. Uh, but it's so hard. It, it's, it's incredibly, tough. incredibly tough. Because I think that, I mean, out of the targets that Brendan Rice had, in the first game, I don't think a single one of them was catchable, right? Yeah. So that you have to factor that in. At this last game, he dropped a pass short of the sticks on third down that wouldn't have been a first down anyways. You have to catch it. There was contact at the catch point, and he lost it. That's fine. He said it himself. If he doesn't make it, it's on him. So, I don't know. I mean, but Simi Fehoko, I mean, what if I told you this dude's already had three 20-plus yard catches with how bad this offense has been through two weeks? Yeah. And this dude has catches of 30, 29, and 22. He's been making big plays. That's how you make the team. You add in special teams and all that. This is where the kind of wrinkle comes into it. This is from Rob Capier, who says, buy or sell, the Chargers will keep seven wide receivers on the 53-man roster. You keep seven, it's an easy decision. It's clearly those two ahead of everyone else, the Jalen Johnsons, the Jalen Gills, the Cornelius Johnsons, even a, you know another draft pick. I think Simeon makes it over him easily. Oh, yeah. If you keep seven, David, you have easily enough room. But are you buying or selling that they can actually keep seven? No, I, I'm buy, I am not buying it. I am selling it. And, and I've said all along, I expect the Chargers to keep six wide receivers. The thing is, is you keep seven wide receivers. That means you got to keep one less defensive back or one less offensive lineman. Has to one come less from defensive somewhere. Lineman. It's got to yeah. come from somewhere. And there are other positions that you know is going to deal with attrition more so probably than the wide receiver unit. So yeah. that's, you know, what you have to play the the 53-man roster gymnastics, right? Like that's... Yeah. You know, that's one of the most difficult things when you're trying to figure it out. But um, I'm going to sell it. I don't think they're going to keep seven wide receivers. I think it's going to be six. And, you know, it's going to be a really, really tough decision. Yeah. I mean, if it's a live or dead thing, I, I'm selling it just because it's very, very rare that it happens. But it's not impossible, right? It, it's improbable, but it's not impossible. I mean, yeah. and, you know, Jim Harbaugh said that himself. He said, not out of the realm of possibility. They keep seven of those are the seven f best football players. He also just randomly reference judge judy right after that so you never know <laughs> where big things judge are judy going. Yeah. but the ravens with joe hortiz in the front office with greg roman on, as the offensive coordinator in 2021 kept seven wide receivers they had one elder statesman in the room with sammy Watkins. the rest of it was a very very young receiving core where they didn't have a lot of questions answered so very similar situation to what you have now and if i'm playing devil's advocate even though i'm selling it i would say Keeping someone like Jordan McFadden as a reserve offensive lineman, but that can also play fullback, opens up some versatility because you don't have to keep a true fullback. Yeah. If you have two quarterbacks and an emergency quarterback, which is a new thing, right? Emergency third quarterback, that opens up a spot. So there is ways to make it work. When I'm going through it and trying to crunch the numbers, I haven't found a way to do it. I, I just think there's other guys at other positions that are more likely to make it than Brendan Rice or Simi Fehoko. But it's really tough. And I, I don't think this is how they thought it would play out. I mean, I think they hoped that Brendan Rice would, would pull away. And I think he's had some really good moments at camp. I just don't think he's had anything or, you know, obviously nothing in the preseason to write home about. And in practice, I don't know if he's done enough to just separate himself and make himself concrete when these roster decisions come down. But let's get to this one first from Chris St. Denis before we get into some more stuff. But he says, buy or sell. Quentin Johnston leads the team in receiving yards and has 10 plus touchdowns in his first Pro Bowl season. So, David, I'm selling this. <laughs> I'm selling it. I mean, first of all, I'm trying to make the Pro Bowl in the AFC with how many freaking good receivers there Incredibly are out there. It's so, impossible. so tough. I mean, you're talking about the Tyree Kills and the Jamar Chases of the world, like, and that's only just to name a couple of them. There's so many yeah. good ones. Stephon Diggs, all these guys are up in the AFC. I mean, it's hard to do. And 10 touchdowns after having one last year. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I like it. I like the improvements we've seen from Quentin Johnson. I'm not ready to, to go full hype on him just yet. Yeah, I mean, I love Quentin Johnson. Obviously, I've uh, made no bones about that. Uh, it's very clear. But You have a Quentin I'm, Johnston shirt. You have a shirt that has Quentin hey. Johnson all over it. One, Friend of one the of show. The, one, one, one of, of his friends. Show. One of Friend his of friends show. gave me a T-shirt, and I will gladly rock it for sure. But... He's, he's still got to show me some more on the football field, right? I, I appreciate the fact that he's put the work in. It shows. Um, it definitely has made a difference so far. But going from one to ten touchdowns, that that is a tall task. Can yeah. I see seven to eight? 
Yeah, I can I can see seven to eight. When it's and leading properly. the team in receiving yards, right? Leading which the I, team? Nah, I'm not going. I would I'm put him there. as the third most likely at best right now, and that would be yeah. putting him behind DJ Chark, who you know banged up at practice today. We'll see because Quentin Johnson does feel like wide receiver four. Yeah, but yeah, I mean it's I don't know. I mean the other thing, David, you're playing in a Greg Roman offense, which I like. I've said before, I think this is going to throw it. This offense will throw up more than any Greg Roman offense in the past. For sure. 100%, I believe that. At the same time, in years past, there's maybe one receiver that has a really good year. And, and even that was, you know, it's the Anquan Boldens, Michael Crabtree had a year, Hollywood Brown had a year. But it's not like you're seeing multiple guys put up really big numbers. So he would have to kind of lead the way for this wide receiver. There's only one don't. football to go around. Exactly. I just don't think he's there yet, and there's nothing wrong with that. But also, we told you Justin Herbert, 11 out of 12 today. The one pass that wasn't completed was a pass to Quentin Johnson that he dropped and ended up in the arms of Christian Fulton for an interception. So take that for what you will, but it's, you know, progress is there's, not linear. There's yeah. going to be some bumps. It's great to see yeah. what he's doing. I'm not expecting perfection out of him or just a breakout season as of right now, but we still have much more to get into, including JT Woods moving to corner, giving him a better chance to make this team. This is something that happened. I kind of love it. I think it works much better for his skill set. We're talking about how deep, good this defense can be. And also, a fear called in when a fear calls in, you get to his voicemail. So, we're getting into that and much more in today's Locked On Chargers podcast. David, we have many more great buyer sales to get into, but I do want to just thank all the everydayers out there for contributing to shows like this. We're at our best when we're getting you guys involved in the show. We no have doubt. the best everydayers that are out there. So many people, you know, we appreciate and, and everyone who hit us up at Locked on LAC, even the guys and girls we're not going to get to today because there's so many good ones. We had to make some tough decisions today. But thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen. If you guys need a second listen, make sure to check out the Locked on Fantasy Football podcast. And I'm going to continue running on the same platform as I have all along. Listen to the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast so you don't get last in your league and you don't end up going viral for having to do something very embarrassing for getting last place. Couldn't in your be league. me. So make sure you go subscribe and follow free and locked on football fantasy football on YouTube and also wherever you get your podcast from. Get the advice now before you do your draft. You're gonna need it, and you will not finish last if you're an everyday or make them your second lesson. So let's continue getting into these buyer sells here, Dave, and we have some good ones. Oh, my God, we have a great Will Disley one. I mean, you didn't even talk about before this. Well, we'll, we'll get into it at the end. But this one here is from Tanner Savage. Buy or sell, JT Woods move to corner gives him a better chance to make this team. What do you think? Yeah, I'm going to buy it 100%, actually. Uh, I think the one thing that we know uh, about JT Woods' skill set is that he has very good coverage ability. He has very good recovery speed. And he had a propensity to take the football away in college football. Okay. That hasn't really shown itself so far yeah. uh, as a safety in the NFL, but the coverage skills were there, man. Like he's yeah. able to be sticky. Like he can stick. He's got the recovery speed. Like, and that's kind of what you need to be able to excel at the cornerback position in the NFL. And sure. this is just added versatility too for, for, you know, Jesse Minter, you know, you're allowed to have somebody who, is a former safety and and a corner so you can kind of get a little bit creative with the defensive backs that you want to have on the field and in what positions it was so great watching him line up a corner making two tackles and run defense on back-to-back -back plays which i just thought was so good but i do think it minimizes the things he doesn't do well like absolutely I think there's still some potential you know change of direction issues and things like that that you know you, playing corner is much different playing and safety in that way but what you're taking away is you know him trying to come up and make a tackle from 15 yards down the field and having all of this open space and being the last line of defense. Yeah. It's much harder to do that than to allow a reception and tackle a guy that you're already right next to for the most part, right? Two different things. I think it minimizes his weaknesses, and I'd say I'm buying it, but I'm buying that it's both of the things. Being yeah. able to do both. Being able to play some corner potentially. Versatility. And being able to be an emergency safety if you need him, right? Because that's, I think, what he would have to be in this situation. Gives you some depth at corner. But the problem is, and if I was playing devil's advocate on this, I would say this. It would be very hard for him to make it as the seventh corner on this team. Because even with him moving to corner, I would say Christian Fulton, Asante Samuel Jr., Ja Taylor, Dean Leonard, Cam Hart, Tarheeb Still. All those guys are ahead of him. 
in my opinion, right? Maybe not mm-hmm. in the coach's opinion. To me, all those guys are ahead of JT Woods, and those guys are all locks to make the roster. So if it's just going in as a corner, and they're going to keep four other safeties behind besides JT Woods, I think it'd be hard for him to make it as a seventh cornerback. But the versatility to do both, you know, kind of the theme for what this roster construction has been so far, I think definitely helps his chances for sure. And he's looked pretty good doing it, surprisingly. So yeah. this one here is from Andrew Baradinik. <laughs> Try my best on that. Buy or sell. If healthy, the Chargers defense will finish top five in sacks. BTFU bolt the F up. David, what do you think here? I mean, to me, I think this one's easy. Very nice. Very nice. (laughs) Uh, Yes, absolutely. I am buying it. The Chargers were sixth last year in sacks with 48. And they have a deeper edge room this year than they had last year. And hopefully that starts out with a healthy Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. So with that being said, absolutely yes. Um, Also, with... You know, Jesse Minter coming in and what looks like a propensity to enjoy uh, utilizing the slot blitz. Yeah. I think the members of the secondary are going to get in on the action on the sack parade as well. So absolutely. I think this is the easy one for me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I think the same way. I mean, I think the thing is, is it's not just edge rushers, right? Yeah, it's it's as a team. What are you going to do? And I think the hard thing is the defensive tackle room. I don't know how many sacks you're expecting, right? Because you have teams that have great edge rushers and great interior rushers. Sure. The Chargers don't necessarily have that on that level. So I don't know how many sacks you can count on from the interior of this defensive line outside of Morgan Fox, who's a proven commodity. Yeah. That being said, the propensity for Jesse Minter to blitz, the willingness he has not only to send slot corners, but to send linebackers, to send safeties at times. Like, I think we will see the back half of this defense go for at least 15 plus sacks this year between the corners, between the linebackers, between the safeties. That might be conservative. I I might even go bring it up to 20, right? Yeah. Between Derwin and both linebackers and the slot blitzes, all of those guys, like I think 15 plus very doable for that group. And that's why I would have confidence in saying that they can be top five in sacks. I mean, have a chance, you know, maybe even push for one. Let's do this one. Even though it doesn't totally fit, I, we have to give this Will Disley one in because I just think it's hilarious. And this is the buy or sell that I came up with because we have to give Will Disley a shout out, man. He was so good in that game, exactly what the Chargers have needed as a run blocking tight end. So the buy or sell is this. <laughs> Daniel Jones is closer to Patrick Mahomes than Trey McKitty is to Will Disley. Buy or sell. Easy buy, a hundred hundred percent. Sounds easy crazy, buy. but totally true. Trey McKitty was god awful. I, I think they had to almost actually find a new spot to put him at the end of the line. He was so yes. bad. And Will Disley is incredible. My God, it's Especially amazing blocker, right? to watch Man. him as a blocker. Like he erases defenders. Uh, he's he's an extra offensive lineman. Like yeah. he is that good. And my God, <laughs> we are spoiled to have Will Disley in the building. It is a wonderful thing. He's exactly what this team needed to try to fit the identity that they want to have in 2024. And he was awesome on Saturday. If you're going back to do a rewatch while he's in the game, check out number 81 because he was moving people. I mean, it was sweet to watch double teaming with Rashawn Slater on dues and just absolutely taking them out of the screen. He was awesome. And and like, it sounds crazy. If you're talking about, you know, Daniel Jones and Patrick Holmes, but like Trey McKitty was brought in to be a run blocking tight end. And just couldn't do it. And, it and like, I, I don't like, yeah. I mean, I hate bashing players. He was just really, really bad. I, that's just, it, it is what it is. Yeah. I actually saw him on Buffalo. Glad to see him get another chance. Maybe he can turn hey, his career him. around. <laughs> I will say when I watched it and just caught, you know, a replay of a, a, a Bill's preseason game, I saw him for one play and he got a holding call. So take that for <laughs> what he will. But it, it was very fitting, at least based on what his Chargers career was. But we do have a Thier calling. Let's hear what a Thier has for us this week. Daniel. This is your baby, Ethel, by yourself Tuesday. Jesse Minter will be the Cowboys head coach in 2025 after leading the Chargers defense to an AFC championship. I'm buying it. What do you say? Let's go, baby. Ethel, I love you. Thank you for calling in. I don't think this is crazy as far as just the sentiment of, you know, Jesse Minter getting a head coaching job very soon. I'm going to sell that it happens in 2025, even though I'd love to see the Cowboys, you know, and all my Cowboy fan fan friends totally in misery. That's always great. Like seeing Cowboys fans suffer is is really awesome. That being said, even though Mike McCarthy could very well get fired after 2025, I think Brandon Staley, of all people, could be a cautionary tale of, you know, taking a defensive coordinator 
who's only done it for one season and then making him your head coach. Could Jerry Jones do something like that? I mean, I like to think Jesse Minter is probably not the one that wants to be the puppet for Jerry Jones. So I don't think it could happen. I say two years, David, is when I would start getting worried about Jesse Minter potentially taking a head coaching job. That's exactly where my mind was as well. I don't see it happening next year. I think that's just a little bit too much to ask. I do agree that the Brandon Staley effect has a part to play in that. Um, a two years, three years, I think that's much, much more doable yeah. and much more realistic in my opinion. And that's what Mike McDonald did, right? Like Mike McDonald took over uh, for Wing Martindale, really only a season and a half pretty much. Or Well, no, he took over for him, but they didn't work good until kind of halfway through that first season. They get Roquan Smith. They're the number one defense from then until the end of the 2024 season or the 2023 season. So yeah. It, it could happen quick. Jesse Minter, it's, I mean, seeing what he's been able to do through these two preseason games would be hard to dissuade you, right, that he's going to get a head coaching job, and that will be what his future is. I'm just, maybe it's just, I hope to God that he stays yeah, yeah. around. I want to keep that, him on the staff, man. 100%, man. Like, especially if he's doing that good to garner that kind of attention. You know, could he get some interviews after one year? Absolutely. Sure. Will the Cowboys, you know, flame out and fire Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones wants to interview Probably. Jesse Minter in 2025 at the year? I think so. So, obviously, AFC Championship game, I'm not ready to. That's a bridge too yeah, far for me at this yet. point. Yeah. I promise I will, you know, buy more. But you're just you're, you're, you're getting out of control out there. I love you, though. <laughs> but that is going to wrap things up for today's show. Make sure you guys are back here with us tomorrow because it is your team every day. And thank you to all the everydayers who hit us up for today's show at Locked on LAC or call it in the voicemail line at 323-524-7924. We truly tried to get to as many of these as we could and make sure you guys get in on the next one and we'll keep these ones we got today just in case we need some more next week but thank you guys we will probably be doing a fan mail show this week so if you guys want to turn your buy yourselves into a fan mail question no problem with that no problem in repurposing and another chance to get it on the show but thank you guys and to make sure you never miss the show as always go subscribe or follow for free and locked on charges youtube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from as well as finding the show's page on twitter at locked on lac you can find me at dan talk sports and david drogmeyer at dro talk sd you can also find us on instagram at locked on chargers and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. But Justin Herbert is back. We are floating on Angel's wings. And we are very excited to see how the rest of this practice goes. So we'll be back tomorrow with maybe a practice report. We'll see what happens there. But always the latest Chargers news and storylines. So until then, guys, take it easy and go Bolts.